Well, welcome to Privilege Catamarans America. I'm Rob Poirier, and today we're going to talk about the things that make the Privilege 510 truly the best circumnavigation catamaran in its class. Throughout the list, I'm going to keep it to the top 10 because obviously this could be a long, long video. Um, but keep in mind that safety is in virtually every subject. So we're going to touch upon safety a lot because that's a pretty critical feature that goes into the design of these boats. So item number one is weather protection, really critical to the long distance sailor. The Privilege 510 has a safety glass windshield. It has a proper full enclosure on the helm, and it also has a really wonderful removable full enclosure in the cockpit. This allows you to obviously stay at the helm in all conditions. It's often said that you can steer and drive a boat from inside. That's crazy. Line of sight from the helm is what matters most. And if you ever have to escape the helm to escape weather, the boat wasn't designed for circumnavigating, pure and simple. Item number two um, might seem counterintuitive for sailing out, but storage. Um, having talked to many, many clients who have lived aboard for years, it's amazing how storage can really make or break the enjoyment of living on a boat and also the ability to call it a home. I mean, because a live aboard really is, you're really converting this boat into your home. And the last thing you want to be doing is storing foodstuffs under floorboards. So one of the real beauties of a privilege is that hand built wood interior lends itself perfectly for capturing all available storage capacity. I mean, I think we've done a really good job as well of designing things to work better, stand up pantries and such, and lots of hanging lockers. But the custom built wood interior really captures a lot of storage. And there's another feature on the privilege because it is not a boat that's been designed for charter, meaning we wanna use all available space for accommodation. We've kept nice large forward lockers and aft lockers for outside storage as well. And that really makes a difference in the design of the boat. Moving on to number three, probably should have been number one, but again, going on feedback I get from clients over the years, and that is how well the boat sails and manages from the helm. As a couple, you're gonna be shorthanded sailing all the time. So it's really important that the sail plan of the boat be very well considered. So there's a few things we do on this boat that really make it the best boat for a couple to live aboard and sail together. And the first is how we manage that large mainsail. The mainsail on a boat this big is gonna be about a thousand square feet. And so, you know, bringing down the main can be really challenging for a lot of couples. It's amazing how many catamarans you see out on the water sailing with head sail alone. So we always use a Park Avenue boom on our boats. That really makes flaking that large main much, much more manageable and putting the sail away as well. So you're more likely to use it more because it's easier to manage. The other thing that we install on our mains is a downhaul. Um, in the wrong conditions, uh, getting a main down can become suddenly very problematic. But by having a downhaul installed on all our boats, under all conditions, all by yourself, you're always gonna be able to reduce the main. And because you can manage everything without leaving the helm, that means setting a reef into that main is also very easy and all easily done by one person at the helm. We've also installed uh, the Genoa with an electric furling system, which we think is really important on a boat this size. The other sail that we like to see on our boats at all times is a screecher. Unlike a Jenniker or a Spinnaker, the nice thing about the screecher is it's got, it has UV protection and we leave it um, mounted on the bowsprit at almost all times. Obviously in heavy storms, it's easy to take down, but you can leave it up almost all the time. And that means that it's ready to deploy anytime you need it or want it. It also points a lot better than those other light air sails. It also has the advantage of allowing you to run downwing, wing on wing with a Genoa very, very easily. So it's a, it's a setup for a cruising couple that's just excellent. And again, it's something we wanna see on all our boats. Number four, um, ground tackle, anchoring. Critically important for the liveaboard sailor. I mean, I don't think it's, it's a, a secret that for every day that you're sailing, you're gonna spend multiple more days on anchor. So a good anchor setup on your liveaboard boat is pretty critical. Um, again, this boat is well thought out for this. 
you have, first of all, not just a, a dual anchor setup, but we've been building our boats with twin windlass setups as well. So you got to remember on a boat this size, the weight of the anchor and the chain is such that if you lose the windlass, having to raise it manually is not a situation you want to find yourself in. So having a backup anchor and a backup windlass for that circumnavigation um, project is pretty, we think, pretty important. The boat's also designed with very deep chain lockers. So you don't get any stacking issues, very easy to manage, and you're able to carry a lot more train. The boat is built for that balance as well. Number five, um, another important thing, if you're going to live aboard your boat, you're going to have to learn to do an awful lot of service work yourself. So it's important that you look at how equipment is placed throughout the boat. You want good access to everything. I I'm shocked to see the way many boats are built with engines, gen sets, water makers, kind of shoehorned into small little cavities. Uh, you, want a, you want an engine room. You want to be able to get in there and be able to move around lots of elbow space. If that's not available, this is going to make your life very, very difficult. It's not a very good idea. Uh, the next item, one of my favorite features on the Privilege 510 is the dinghy storage. I'm not having a tender dangling off the back of your boat in a storm is a wonderful thing. And if you look at the design of the Privilege 510, it's a crane type system that lifts and rests your tender um, on a solid platform. And, and because many of our clients really like those heavy center console type you know, dinghies, this is particularly important. So this is a really important and nice feature for this boat. Item number seven, I'm gonna call sanctuary. This is a human's need issue. It's not unusual once you've been on a boat for a period of days, sometimes weeks, that you're gonna need some time alone. And it's critical to have a place in the boat where you can get that, private, that privacy. The master cabin on the Privilege 510 is probably its most notable feature. And that is because it's, it, it spans the full breadth of the boat from starboard to port. It's bright, it's extremely well, well ventilated has an island berth and that's really important because if you're trying to get time alone and you have to find yourself in a room where the bed is touching three walls you're going to just feel claustrophobic so this space on this boat is is really really wonderful we've done an entire video just on that so if you're really interested in learning more i recommend you go and find that video on our youtube channel the next item i'm going to touch on kind of goes back to serviceability but i think it's also a very important safety feature if you're going to sail around the world, do not do it with a boat with sail drives. You want a shaft drive system for your motors. There's many places in the world where, where, where finding a haul out is very, very difficult, if not impossible. And, and you want to be able to have everything, transmissions, everything serviceable from inside the boat. So really shaft drive is a very important feature on our, on our 510. Uh, number nine, well, actually, I promised to keep this to 10 subjects, but I'm going to cheat here a little bit. I'm going to go 9A and 9B. So 9A, we like to prepare our boats for international travel by having a dual electrical system. So both a, a 110, you know, 110 North American system, 220 European system. Both those systems include, you know, there are places, surprisingly, in like Brazil, where we've sailed, where you've got both 110 and 220 in the same country. Rare, but it still can happen. So really nice to have. 9B, 80 horsepower engines. Uh, really, there are going to be plenty of times in this world where you're going to need more power. And, you, you know, unfortunately, too many of these large vessels are built with, are, are really underpowered. And you will discover in strong winds and strong currents and tight, confined environments that, boy, you're going to wish you had good props and of course, bigger engines. So shaft drive, 80 horsepower Yanmar engines are what we put on this boat. I'm gonna wrap up number 10 by saying, the reason it's the best liveaboard circuit navigation class boat is because it was designed for that. that. This is all this boat was designed for. There's no flexibility in this design. There are boats out there that people live aboard that were really designed for performance. So all their food stores are under floorboards. They don't have enough storage and the boat's too lightly built. There are also boats out there that were really designed primarily for charter. They reduced the number of beds and heads and said it's an owner's version, but it's still a charter boat. This boat was designed for safety, for strength, 
for the ability to carry a lot of weight, because that's what a liveaboard does, and still maintain great performance, um, safe, watertight in terms of weather protection. So the boat was designed for this, and that is probably why it really is unrivaled as the best possible 50-foot catamaran that you would buy for the project of living and sailing around the world. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again.